Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Fireside Chat Series uh, with Pure. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Charlie Boyle, uh, VP and General Manager of DGX Systems from NVIDIA, uh, you know, to sit down and, and chat with us a bit and, and trade thoughts on uh, where, uh, you know, where we sit with AI and just have some discussions uh, around uh, everybody's favorite topic uh, du jour. Uh, Charlie, uh, welcome. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, th thanks, Robin. Uh, really, really happy to be here. It's uh, super exciting. We're coming up on the eight year anniversary of when we first launched DGX. And, you know, it's incredible how the AI industry has expanded from, you know, where we first started in research and, you know, you needing a PhD to uh, you know, deliver AI to, you know, our early partnerships with Pure and helping bring, you know, AI into the enterprise. And today, you know, AI is just really everywhere. It's on, you know, everyone's hot topic list. How do I use it? How do I get started with it? Um, you know, and just seeing that you know, explosion in AI, you know, in every sector and every customer. Absolutely, I agree. And you know, when we first met years ago uh, in those earlier days, uh, not sure that either of us uh, could have predicted, uh, you know, kind of where where we're at today. Uh, I, I I guess that kind of um, you know brings to mind uh, you know the first question uh, for me is. Uh, you know, with what we've seen uh, with AI over the last couple of years and, and the buzz that is out there today uh, and the developments over the last six, seven, eight years, um, where do you where do you think we are kind of in the development cycle of AI technology? Right. Are we you know, are we are we in the seventh inning stretch? Are we, uh, you know, uh, down in the ninth inning or are we just getting started, uh, you know, in the first, second, third innings? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been great to see the growth in in AI and you know doing this day in and day out. You know, you, you think everyone's doing it, but you know, for most enterprise customers, you know, their wake up call was Chat GPT, and you know, they started seeing you know the power of AI and how it could really transform their business from you know just having basic chatbots to actually having you know real conversations and getting real. Uh, answers and access to data for customers. So, you know, from an enterprise perspective, you know, it's early, but it's early and real, meaning, you know, there's real applications today. There's great examples of how people can get started and they don't need to completely start from scratch. I think one of the biggest developments over the past year has been pre-trained AI models that get enterprises very close to what they need. And the the difference of you know not having a pre-trained model versus having one, you don't have to spend months or years training that model. The biggest thing you need to do to the enterprise is add you your own unique enterprise data to it. You know, and that's really how you customize the thing that your users see and make the model something that you know has the personality of your company. Because uh, at the end, you know, AI is all about data. You know, and how customers take the data they have and transform that into a model that then serves their customers, you know, but Rob, I'm, I'm interested because, you know, pure customers, you know, have a lot of enterprise data in that, you know, what are you hearing from them and what should they start looking at, you know, for their AI initiatives? Yeah, I, I would agree. I think uh, what we've seen is very much the same five, six years ago, really even three years ago, I think uh, AI projects were seen as uh, from the broader enterprises, almost a, a bit of a, a too big of a hill to climb, right? If you have to start from scratch and do foundational pre-training and without a clear end in sight, it's a it's a lot to bite off. I think the biggest change we've seen and we we hear from our customers is with uh, you know the advent of chat GPT and the focus on LLMs and the availability of uh, really high quality pre-trained models, it's really democratized access to the broader technology for the enterprise. Enterprises can now look at um, how do they connect their data sources into these models, into this technology, uh, whether it's uh, through fine tuning with their uh, domain specific data, uh, whether it's uh, through techniques like uh, retrieval augmented generation or RAG uh, and, and being able to bring together, uh, you know, their operational data sets, maybe their historical data sets uh, to, to uh, you know, produce better and more focused uh, to their business results. I think that's where a lot of uh, the focus is in the enterprise today. And, and I think that, you um, I think it's real, uh, but I think it is earlier uh, in, in that in that journey. Um, you know, I think from uh, you know from the point of view of if you're a pure customer, or really if you're a customer in the enterprise that uh, wants to get there, and, and you're thinking about oh, what does it mean to uh, to deploy these AI environments, 
um, you know, the, what we see the mo our most successful customers that head down this road uh, really are, are looking for a couple of things at a high level, right? One is um, the more that you can take your enterprise data and connect it into these systems, whether it's through fine tuning, whether it's through uh, RAG, uh, the better you are. So number one is uh, figure out what data you have and where it sits uh, and break down silos, right? Uh, the typical uh, his, you know, the historical enterprise data environment has been very fragmented and siloed. Uh, and that's an absolute anti-pattern for getting the most value of, of connecting those pits of data together. Um, the second is really preparing uh, infrastructure. And, and uh, we see our most successful customers uh, planning uh, and preparing their infrastructure, not just necessarily for uh, you know, speeds and feeds, uh, but also uh, for just as much so reliability for, you know, these are mission critical environments, all of that stuff matters. Um, and then lastly, agility, right? The, I still think this is, uh, you know, fast moving space. I think, you know, our partnership continues to, to, to move along at, at breakneck pace. Um, the technology is going to keep evolving. And so uh, being able to be agile about your data storage uh, plans, uh, your infrastructure, what those workflows look like, I think is really important. If you design yourself into a box where, uh, you know, next year's model sets or next year's techniques don't cleanly fit into that box, um, that's going to be, be a real problem. Um, and so that's kind of what we're seeing. But uh, Charlie, I'm curious, you, you work with, uh, you know, many other customers and, and partners. Um, what do you see as, uh, you know, what do you see as kind of the top considerations uh, from a data storage perspective? Yeah, I mean, Rob, I think you touched on a, a few really great things there. You know, the one of the big differences, and you mentioned, <clears throat> Uh, you know, the hottest acronym right now, RAG, Retrieval gen, uh, retrieval Augmented Generative AI, you know, the retrieval part is so important for that. And, you know, when you think of a, a modern AI model, whether it's a pre-trained model or something that you built yourself, the data that that model was built on is frozen in time on that day. And so, you know, a very simple example is, well, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? That model has no idea how to do that. But with a RAG model, it knows where to go get that data source. And something that's super important in the enterprise is you tell it where that trusted data source is. So the weather example is super easy. You know, my trusted data source is going to be, you know, an online weather service. But when you're asking a question of, you know, how do I, uh, you know, set up my, you know, latest pure storage appliance, well, you want that trusted data source to be going to pure. You don't want it to just be going to, you know, somebody's blog on the internet, you know, who may you know happen to have the right answer or the wrong answer. And so, you know, the retrieval part of RAG, first of all, you need your storage, your data very close to your model. So, you know, when customers are interacting with AI models, we call that inference, but that model running has to be very close to the data because the model could give you the first part of the answer very quickly, but then if it takes a long time to actually get to the data store, parse the data and get the customer the answer back, it feels unnatural. And when we start talking about response times, you know, for a, you know, a complex AI model, you know, each word that's coming out has to be, you know, in the less than 100 millisecond range, ideally less than 50 milliseconds. And as your model gets more complex, you need to get a bunch of different data because you may in that RAG model need an answer. So it goes to a, you know, an internal company document. The model reads that document and realizes it needs to go look at another document that may be a PDF that's got an image on it. You know, how do you process that? So, you know, in not only having great infrastructure, you know, on the compute side and great networking, but having storage super close to those models you know, enables that real time response to the customer and that natural response, which is what every enterprise wants out of their AI. You know, in the early days of like phone response systems, what did everyone hit? You hit zero, you said operator, but yeah, really yeah. great AI models right now, you actually want to interact with the AI model because it's so much faster to get you the right information than pushing zero and going to an operator. Now, you know, that's an old school concept, but, you know, that's really what we're seeing with customers is as they're putting the, their AI models in production, they've got to be very thoughtful about where their data lives, how close it is, how fresh it is. Um, you know, and one of the, the the newest concerns that we've started to see is 
data access and security policies. You know, you may have a rag that is for your internal employees. Well, okay, you know, as you know, a regular employee, I should be able to look at all my basic corporate information. But if I've got the model, but if you're the CFO, you probably can look at other stuff, and right. you, we don't want you know the two to yeah, mix. You, you don't want the you know the college intern to to be able to access you know confidential roadmap information on day one. You know, so data access and data security is super important in that space. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, as you were talking through, I think the responsiveness is a big piece we're seeing as well. Um, you know, to use your previous example, uh, hey, what's the weather look like uh, tomorrow? If I have to wait for every word to come out, only yep. to realize that, hey, I asked the wrong question. And I really meant to ask, what's the weather look like tomorrow in New York? Because I'm flying there. Again, that has that has very real implications as to uh, you know how how usable uh, the technology is uh, in, in kind of the business process, and so we're seeing a lot of focus on um, you know not just not just performance of the one system, but hey, to your point, uh, where are the data sources that need to be fed into this, and um, and what does the overall performance look like uh, as a result of that. Um, so uh, I, I guess, you, you know, I guess maybe to close off, um, you know, curious if uh, if you can share uh, kind of insights from uh, from your end and from NVIDIA, NVIDIA's end, you know, if I'm an enterprise customer and I'm just getting started uh, on my AI journey, uh, trying to figure out where do I jump in, where do I head, um, what what are your words of advice? What should I be doing? What should I be focusing on? Yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it's a great question. And, you know, something that I hear, you know, every time I'm at shows and conferences, you know, where do I get started? The first thing, you know, you've taken that first leap, you want to get started. Uh, you know, so getting started with AI today versus six months from now, get started today. Um, you know, and one of the big things that we've done here at NVIDIA is started publishing a lot of uh, online examples that you can interact with, you know, we call them labs, but you can see how a rag works, you can you know, look at, you know, well, if I add this little bit of data to it myself, obviously not company confidential data, but, you know, it, you know, how does this process work? What does a demo look like? Because a big part of AI is inspiring people inside of your company, you know, to say, look what this can do, but then to go from, I've seen this great example, I'm excited about it. You know, the real thing, you know, your next step is how do I interact with my data? Uh, you know, and that's when, you know, you, you, you know, engage your NVIDIA team, engage your pure team, you know, the, the pure team knows how your data is laid out, knows where your storage is. And then together we can work on what's the first project, because you don't want to try to, you know, build a hundred AI projects at once. You want to get one good one started. And as soon as people in your company start to see that project, everyone gets super excited and every department says, well, I want some of that. I want some of that, um, you know, but getting that first one up and running and don't make it too complicated. You know, there's tons of things that you can do. You can pre-train, you can guardrail, you know, all those aspects, you know, make it usable, make it safe. You know, that example of, you know, you don't want to let AI loose on all of your internal corporate information for anyone to see, you know, I've seen examples of that and it's gone sideways, but like, you know, an example we use all the time uh, with companies is like, do your first example on all of your public company news. And then you can easily ask that question because there's no safety issue there because yeah. it's already fully public. It's on your website. But, you know, if you're wanting to look you know, through your company's last five years of press releases, you're like, I know we talked about this at some point. Well, you don't want to you know read two hours of text that's a super easy example. And, you know, think of something like that. And then that inspires people to say, what's the next most useful thing? And that's a big part of AI today. It's not what's necessarily the thing that's going to make you the most money the next day, but what's the most useful thing to your employees, to your customers. And then over time, you're going to figure out how to optimize and make more money and be more efficient. Yeah, I agree. You know, when I talk to customers, um, uh, you know, I very common to hear, I've got 50, you know, 50 project ideas coming at me left, right, and center. Uh, what do I, like, where do I get started? Uh, and I always recommend, yeah, like you said, uh, identify where you're going to get the highest ROI the most quickly. This is not a space where you want to kick off a two-year development project before you start showing results. 
Um, but then also, uh, because it's fast moving, because you are going to get, uh, you know, all of these different uh, project ideas and initiatives, uh, planning for agility, right? And, and hey, what does that mean in terms of, uh, you know, what does that mean in terms of my application infrastructure, in terms of am I prepared for containers? Do I really understand, uh, you know, my data workflows? Um, you know, but this, I think this idea of identifying where you can quickly show value and then expanding from there, um, while at the same time, uh, reviewing your data workflows, your data security posture, your data provenance. Um, I, I think from, you know, from, uh, the customers I'm chatting with, I, I think those are the, uh, the areas that, again, the most uh, successful uh, clients we have are focused on, uh, more, uh, I would say, uh, early on, uh, in the process. Um, well, Charlie, uh, look, you know, I, I want to thank you a lot for the discussion today. Uh, you know, uh, uh, very, uh, uh, very meaty and a, a lot of topics we hit. Um, <clears throat> for those of you tuning in, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of uh, the Fireside Chat series. Um, again, Charlie, thank you for joining us. Uh, and uh, I hope the audience, uh, I hope you will join us for more chats in the series. Uh, but until then, uh, I see you next time and I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks, everyone.